Hi, this is Drew Loker, and today I'm going to walk you through the steps on how to do some photo editing basics. The first thing that we're going to want to do is open up some sample images. Now, I've provided some sample images for you, or you may certainly open up images of your own, but each of the sample images that I have have some unique challenges that need fixing. So these are things that you want to do possibly before putting your pictures into your Google Slides. On the slide that I have in front of us right now, you'll see the link, Sample Photos link. When you click there, it should take you to a Google Drive where I've installed several images. When you first click on the image, you can either open the image up or click on it one time, right click, and download. When you do this, it's going to download to your computer. In the lower left corner, all right, so my attempt produced an error when I attempted to download. This should work for you on your computer, though. When you click on the image and you click on the little download icon, you should actually get it downloaded to your folder in the download folder in the lower left corner on your screen. You'll actually see it pop up and you can actually show in folder or do a Windows key E. Open up your downloads folder and when you click on the downloads folder, you'll see the file. Here it is, Loker on Guitar. And what I want to do, I've already opened up Paint.net in the background. So here it is, Paint.net open and... I've brought it forward, and I've got my downloads folder forward, and I'm going to click and drag and drop the image. There are a few different ways that you can open that image. That is just one of them by drag and drop. All right, so now that I've got the image in there, the first few steps that we're going to want to do is crop the image. And in order to crop in Paint.net, you first use the Rectangle Select tool by clicking on the Rectangular Select and then dragging across the area that you want to keep. There is a black sheet and some wires in this photo that I don't particularly care for. So I'm going to try that selection again and get rid of that black sheet. Okay, I missed it again, so I'm going to try one more time right there. It's a little bit of a trial and error. Select it until you get what you want. Just to the uh, side of the guitar and right above my hands right there would be good. doesn't have to be perfect, but we really want to get rid of the area we don't want in the image. And now there's this little icon up here called Crop to Selection. So I'm going to click that. It's going to get rid of the area that I don't want. The next step is to adjust the levels. Levels is another way of saying brightness and contrast. And it allows a good bit of control. Curves also allows a lot of control. Levels is a little bit more traditional way of impacting the lows, the midtones, and the high levels. At first glance, it appears that the program has attempted to do an auto. So if you click on auto, or if it didn't do it initially, you can click on auto and see what the program would do on its own. And that doesn't look too bad on my monitor. I'm going to click reset and take control of it myself. And I'm going to bring the midtones up just a bit. And you can see it's very similar. And you can also adjust the output high key. Those are the high tones. There are 256 levels of tones. I can also bring up the low levels. And you can see that the shadows uh, reveal that there's a curtain behind me. And every image is going to be a little different. So the image that you open, you might adjust the highs, lows, and the midtones. In this particular case, I'm going to tweak only the midtones to give me the contrast that I'm looking for in this particular image. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now I'm ready to go ahead and move to the next step. I'm going to control scroll in on my image so that I can see more closely what I'm going to affect. I'm going to hold down the space bar and click. Now you notice when I hold down the space bar, it brings up the hand tool. The hand tool allows me to pan around the image. When I let go of the space bar, the hand tool goes away and it goes back to my uh, previously selected tool. So now I'm going to go to the stamp tool. Once activated, you'll notice that the brush tool parameters are now active at the top. I can control the brush size as well as the hardness. By default, the hardness comes in somewhere around 70 or 50%. 50 You're going to want that to be about 10%, and it doesn't have to be exact. Now I'm going to change my brush size to a much more moderate brush size of 20. If it's too small, it won't work, and if it's too big, it won't work well either. 
Now for dramatic impact, I'm going to show you quickly how this tool works, and then I'm going to show you more realistically how you'd want to apply this. When I click my control key, it samples the source. So if I want to put my eye right in the middle of the forehead, I'm going to hold down my control key and click the center of my eye. Now you'll notice that there is a white circle around the center of my eye, and now I have another circle that is my destination. Wherever I click, I'm going to get the center of that eye. So if I click right in the center of my forehead, I get the center of that eye. If I let go, I get a tract, a, 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 basically a, a cursor that's going to follow and give me that eye or give me that source destination uh, repeated again. So if I want to continue to put eyes on my forehead, I have to redo my source point. And now I can put another eye there. And then I can click again and give myself another eye. So now I've got three eyes across the top of my head. Now that's not really what I want this tool to do. I want to get rid of the bags underneath my eyes and this patch and this uh, freckle over here, uh, age spot. So I'm going to hold down my control key and I'm going to sample right below my eye. That's my source. And now I'm going to click and drag across in one motion across to be able to get that as a smooth motion. Now, at first, it may not work perfectly. You may have to undo and try again, or you may also have to source in from different spots. So on the other side of the eye, other side of the face, I'm going to replace that patch. And then I'm also going to uh, control click again, and I'm going to try to get rid of those wrinkles as well. And so I'm doing a little bit of plastic surgery. Is this realistic? Yes. Is it right? Of course. The problem with the photo is that it made the bags underneath my eyes look worse than they really are. So did I really look that tired that day? Nah, underneath certain lighting, yes. So it's not really fair to have a bad picture with poor um, image there. All right, so that's pretty good for today. We're going to go ahead and save, and I'm going to go File, Save As. You always want to save a new copy of your image. You may add the word edit at the end or just simply the letter E. Now it is going to save it as a JPEG. You could also save it as a paint.net file, which would keep it as a layered document. If I go ahead and save it as a JPEG, it is a universal file and can be opened up by any program. So I'm going to put the letter E at the end of this, which means that this file has been edited and is different than the original file. Always preserve your original. And I'm going to leave the quality at 100%.